Mm-hmm. You're dropping Cam Akers. I mean, even if he goes to another team, do we really think he's going to be, you know, serviceable um, for your fantasy squads or a consistent piece? No. And if you drafted him, you are a idiot, by the way. <laughs> um, Damn, man, way to be nice to the folks. I'm out there sorry. Struggling. I got I to gotta let them know. Um, but I, I just it's just like you never should have been born. You were a mistake from the kick. No. That was all David, not me. But um that being said, yeah, there's that. You're dropping Deion Jackson, um, because he just looked like a guy that you couldn't even it's crazy from one week changes. Like he was looking decent the week before, before those fumbles and everything, and then now he just he didn't get utilized. He didn't get a carry in this game. Um so you're dropping him, dropping Rashad Penny because I told people before Rashad Penny was not even a guy that was like, mm, you know, I'm not going to say he's cooked as someone would say, but who, who would say that? I would say that, oh. <laughs> um, but he's, <laughs> I, I, I think he's somewhat cooked say. because look at the contract that he got and look what he's, mm-hmm. excuse me, look what he's doing. So it just, I know, but I'm not, not going to say he's couldn't it be early. I mean, uh, Chase is, it's, I mean, yeah. Chase is 70 yards on the season. I'm not, I'm not saying he's cooked, obviously. There's no way I would ever proclaim that, you know. But, I mean, everyone's off to a slow start this year. Joe Burrow has looked off. So it's not like, the same you know, thing as Rashad. You can't tell me Rashad Penny and Chase are by normal school. standards. In the same galaxy, let alone. No, no but, but let Penny alone struggle be used. Pe- no, but pe- no, I'm not saying that at all. But, but <laughs> Penny can be valuable. Um, you know, this is a guy who's like, I think he's what, led the league in yards per carry? You know, and he's, he's, uh, I mean, I, I think he averages well above five yards a carry in his career average. Like when he did, when he does get in there, he usually reaps a ton of benefits. You know, I mean, he's, yeah, he's got 5.7 yards per carry. He's led the league, it, it, you know, each of the last two years, you know, prior to this year, he's averaged six or more yards per carry. So when he's, when he's seen some action, he's done some great things. It's just a matter of, you know, I, I it's also the situation. There's so much predicate on situation. So where he may not thrive with the Eagles, might thrive with the next team. Like who knows? You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, fair enough. I still think he's washed right now. Anyhow, um, <laughs> you're dropping Rashad Penny. You're dropping Michael Gallup because I don't understand why people love Michael Gallup. Can you can you help me understand this? I don't understand why people Michael like Michael Gallup. It's I, because once upon a time, this guy was in a thousand yard <laughs> receiver. Once upon a time. <laughs> It feels like a fucking ice age ago, but you know, it, in 2019, he did catch 1,100 yards, six touchdowns. Was targeted well over 100 times. Was targeted over 100 times in the following year too. This guy does make some acrobatic catches. I think injuries have affected him to some degree. Um, you know, you can make an argument that losing Amari Cooper too to the, uh, the the Browns kind of. Uh, uh, mitigated his level of impact as a result because it doesn't open up a ton of opportunities for him. But I I think Michael Gallup is... I don't want to be too high on him, but like, I I, I don't know if I'm ever going to completely give up on him as like someone to have on your roster, is what I'm saying. Just drop him and get him over with. Um, A couple couple other drops. Juju Smith-Schuster, man. Gotta drop him. But you were okay. Now this is this. I do take issue with this because you did say that you were high on him earlier before the season yeah, started. And we're, I was, uh, I wasn't not, I'm sorry, not, not high, but you thought he could be an asset to this Patriots offense. I did, yeah. You know? and it, so two it, weeks in, now we're gonna drop two weeks yeah, in, just two weeks. Yeah, yeah, just do it what? because I think there's other. If there's you do it if there's other decent options out there. Like, 120 minutes a game. There's point. younger guys out there that you you're looking to grab. Like I like I talked about, like a Jaden Reed. If he's out there, yeah, I'm dropping him for Juju. I'm dropping Juju for him. If Tank Dell's out there, I'm dropping him for Juju. I mean, that that's fair. But I don't know about Reed. I don't know about Reed over Juju. You know, I just think when it comes to season long upcoming, like I think Jaden Reed can be that number two receiver for the Packers. Like, and the later on in the year is where it matters. And I think Jaden Reed can be a solid flex. Well, Overall, well, I just don't think I just don't buy into New England their offense. I just don't. I don't I, fair, no, I, fair I enough. I did they were before. I just don't believe like, like Juju is a guy that will never be a one. He'll no. never be a one. No, he will never, never be one. Be one, right? No, he'll never be the one option in the office. He'll always be at highest two, and yeah. most most of the time he's a three. 
So he's like a great three best case, and it feels like almost that's like the, at this point. So that's the know? problem I have with it. It's like, why yeah. am I keeping on to a guy that at best could be a two, and he's a three at right now, and yeah. right now how he's looking, he's a four. So, um, why, Jaden Reed, let me grab a guy that I think has some upside to him that can potentially be a two in his offense later on in the year. Well, when you say Jaden Reed, though, who do you choose between these two, Jaden Reed or Luke yeah. Musgrave? They're on the same team, so. No, I'm saying who's going to be the two between those two? Um, it's tough to say, but I would probably say Musgrave for the moment because he's literally going to have like every snap at his position. Jaden Reed will be more of a, some time slot, sometimes outside. Right now, so some, if- right now, sometimes outside, but when Watson gets back, he'll probably play more of a slot. But Musgrave is going to play every single snap on a position that is ultimately a sucky position in general. Like you could start yeah, you'll start Musgrave nice. over Jaden Reed in some situation because Musgrave's gonna have every snap pretty much in the but, in that you know, but who knows? I mean they could find an identity finally within their 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 offense, you know, for the first time I mean if you want to exclude Robert Tanya and the last time was really like God. it felt like Jermichael Finley, you know, was the last oh, time God. The Packers had an identity in the tight end game. But so, but with that being said, I mean, it, it sounds like you may be alluding to because we all know, I mean, I, in my opinion, the, the, the best player at their position within that offense right now is Aaron Jones, you know, within, within that Packers offense. So is this going yeah. to be – are you alluding to the possibility – We haven't seen Watson yet this year, so that's – No, 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 but, I, but I'm just saying in terms of what has been already proven, you sure. know? Yeah. Okay. So, but but we all view Watson as the number one passing option or receiving option. We all view yeah. that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, are you alluding to this potentially being a high octane offense this upcoming throughout the remainder of this season? I really think For- that I've said I've said this before about Green Bay, and I said it when we were drafting. And I'm gonna say it again. I think the Packers can be an offense that we look at later on in the year, and we're kicking ourselves because we didn't get enough pieces of it. Because okay. in grand scheme of things, it's not. Jordan Love doesn't have to be like this spectacular quarterback. Eventually, he'll come down a little bit. Um, but ideally, I think Green Bay, Green Bay's offense like, like is still cheap enough that we could buy into, even on the waiver wire. So it's something that I'd rather have. When we're comparing offenses, like you're comparing Green Bay's offense to New England, especially when we're drafting. I'm trying to take I'm going to try to take a stab at Green Bay because they have a lot more younger talent. Yeah, I would agree. I would so agree. With that. There's. There's apples and oranges. Then we talk about Green Bay versus Atlanta. Same thing. There were both offenses were going. A lot of pieces were going a lot later than normal. Mm-hmm. Like where it's like okay, like obviously B. John is. We're not talking about him. Yeah. We're talking about. We're not really talking about Drake London either. We're talking about Kyle mm-hmm. Pitts. We're talking about some and the other receivers that play for Atlanta versus like yeah. Musgrave or another receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Matt Collins, so, all like, those guys. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. taking some of these pieces that are going later. Okay, cool. And even on the waiver wire now, that's still the case. So. With Jaden Reem, he's still not enough rosters. I mean, I think he's only still rostered like fifty percent of leagues. Like, that's that's still low. That's still rookie numbers. I think Jaden Reed could be a guy that we look at later on, and we missed on because you know we thought Watson was going to be this. We don't think Jordan Love is still going to be you know hacking it. But I do, I do believe in the talent. I do like Jaden Reed. I think he can play like I said, inside and outside, and can be a flex for you down the stretch. But yeah, I'm dropping, I'm dropping Juju, I'm dropping Alan Lazard. Um, it's because the Jets offense, like, unfortunately without Rodgers, it's a, it's a one read option, uh, rim read offense, basically. It's Wilson and then sometimes Conklin. So Lassard's not going to get the usage that we even thought he would with Aaron Rodgers. Now let alone with Zach Wilson. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. Yeah. Like Garrett Wilson becomes the only real receiver we can plug and play every week. And Tyler Conklin becomes a guy that we think about at tight end because he'll get some passes thrown to him. But until Zach Wilson morphs his game, which probably won't be this year, can't really rely on Alan Lazard at all. Mm-hmm. 